So I'll tell you a story about a Mach 1, 1970. So I'm rolling through Nashville on my way back home from an event, and I decided to take a back road to cut over to my mom's house. Just as always, I'm always searching for cars, looking at people's garages, barns, fields to see if I can find something. So I get to a four-way stop. I hadn't had phone service in a while, so I said, let me stop here, kind of check out and see where, where I am. Because I'm I don't have GPS on or nothing. I'm just just freelancing it. So I stop and I'm looking down. And I look up and I'm like, well, there's some old cars there in the, in the woods right there. So I creep up and I'm looking real slowly, looking in the woods, checking it out, and peeping out of this like lean to barn, I see this first the 65 Mustang. I'm like, whoa, let's check this out. Then I start looking. And there sits a 1970 Mach 1. So I'm checking it out, and I said, all right, I'm getting out. I'm check this thing out. Looking around, there's nobody around. There's a house right next to it. Don't see any cars out. As I walk around and looking, dogs start barking. Here comes three big Rottweilers. So I'm sitting there going, all right, I'm jumping on this car, or they're friendly. So they come up, they're wagon tails. So right then I know they're friendly, and I'm going to pet them. And I, so I know someone's home. So I go up and knock on the door, and I said, hey, riding through, I buy and sell, collect old vintage cars. Do you mind if I check it out? I said, yeah, it's my father's car. You can look at it, but he won't sell it. I'm like, all right. So I go check it out, look at it. They give me his number to the gentleman that owns it. So I go on, take off to my mom's house, get back to my office, and I call the gentleman. I said, hey. My name is Jason Sherfeld, Vintage Autos. Saw this vehicle. Want to know a little bit more about it. He says, well, I'll be at work tomorrow up there about 12. So the next day, I'm not late. 11.30, I'm waiting on the gentleman to show up. He gets there, older gentleman, shows me around. Didn't want to rush right into it, so I kind of let him lead me, just kind of being friendly, showing that I'm into cars just as much as he is. We start talking some stories. He shows me the Mach 1. This thing is covered in dust. You know it's been sitting there for a minute now. So we're sitting there and we're talking about it and I said, what's the story on this car? He said, so I bought the car back in the late 70s, early 80s and had it, parked it in here and then it was stolen. I was like, oh man, it's stolen, but you have it. He said, yes, they found it at a chop shop. They done pulled all the vins off the vehicle and they were getting ready to paint the car black. And so the car is orange, it's got the shaker hood, it's got the louver, it's got everything you want in a 70 Mach 1. So I start looking at the car, I can tell it's been painted. And I asked him, do you mind if I just open it up and look around? He goes, no, go ahead. So I open it up and look, and I'm noticing the door jams are all original. Underneath the car is solid, there could be no rust found anywhere. Underneath is all original paint. In the trunk is all original stuff, the stamps where it's passed you know, through inspection through the manufacturer. Start looking at it. There sits a 351 with the shaker hood. Everything's there. So I said, what's the story on it? He says, so when it was stolen, they got it back. They were able to find some details on the car that had some literature in it with my name on it. Got the car back to me. I had the car painted back to the orange that it originally was and decided, hey, I'm not going to let this car go again. So I had to get a hold of the state. The state comes out back then and re-stamps you a new VIN and rivets it in your car. They have to be, they are the ones that have to do it. You have to show the documents that you own the car and that this is correct. So keep in mind, this gentleman has cars everywhere. The story has it that him and his father used to have an only four junkyard. And they would keep nice stuff that they would buy and you know, do what not to it. So that's how he acquired this, this vehicle. So he shows the state the title, they punch it, stick it in the car, he backs it in the barn and blocks it off so nobody can steal it again. But he blocked it from himself. So roll fast forward, 38 years later, I find the car and I'm sitting here talking to the gentleman about it. And I said, what's your plans with it? He said, I don't know, I'm gonna restore it one day or maybe my family will, I'm like, or maybe not, it's been sitting here 38 years. You know, a lot of people say they're gonna restore something, but they never do. So he says, no, I'm not gonna sell it, blah, 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 blah. So I go on, I call the guy a month later. Hey, it's Jason Sherfield, Vintage Autos, 
checking with you, you know, about that Mach 1. He goes, I just haven't made my mind up what I want to do with that car. I said, well, you had some other cars up there. You mind if I walk around your property and just kind of pick through it for the day? He says, no, I'll be there at 12. So I get there at 12, talk to him a little bit. We shoot the crap about some old cars and the past stories, and I start making my way around his property. It's probably 60 to 80 acres. So we're sitting there, and I'm walking around. He's sitting back at his little two-man garage. So I get back, and I said, hey, man, you have a couple cars that I'm interested in. He goes, what do you got? And I figured if I buy a couple cars, ease my way in, cheap, cheap way to get in towards the Mach 1 and possibly other cars, because he alluded he has other cars shoved in his, um, in his garage at his house. So I'll buy a 1974 Jeep Cherokee Chief wide track. Had the perfect patina, blue, and it's been rusted down. Everything was there except a grill and bumper. So I said, hey, man, I'll give you 500 bucks. Bought that vehicle from him. He had a 1963 Lincoln Continental. I said, what about that Lincoln? He says, I'll take 500 bucks. I'll take it. And these are all just, they had the engines, but they were just been sitting out there forever. These are perfect restoration cars or someone needs parts, stuff like that. So I'll buy these cars just to, just to get them in, get my way in to the gentleman with the Mach 1. So we start talking. I said, man, what are you going to do with that Mach 1? Do you want to sell it? He's like, well, I need X amount of money. And I'm like, oh, no. We're just not there. So leave. Another month goes by. I go back up there because I know he's going to be there at 12 o'clock. He's, he's traditionalist. He's there at the same time every day. He leaves the same time. So I get up there and we sit down, we start talking, and we're in his little um, two-man garage, and I'm looking, and I like old car memorabilia stuff, and he had like a old Pepsi machine sitting behind him. I said, what's the deal with the Pepsi machine? He says, ah, that was here from back in the, you know, I think we got that back in the 80s, maybe late 70s, and uh, kept taking everybody's quarters, so I decided to put broke on it. I didn't want no one using it because everybody kept complaining about taking their quarters. And he said, I would just fill it up and use it for myself. I said, are you going to sell that, Coke, that Pepsi machine? He goes, yeah, I'll sell the Pepsi machine. So I bought the Pepsi machine. I said, what about that Mach 1, man? And I said, I think we're close. But let's, let's work a deal out. So this was probably October, November of 2018. And I said, here's what I'm willing to give you. And I pulled out cash money. And I said, I got cash money now. This is what I'll give you. So that's what we agreed to. We ended up agreeing to selling the car and getting it in, working on it. And I'm like, this motor's probably locked up, knowing my luck, or something like that. So get the car into my shop, drain all the fluids, put a new starter on it, new solenoids, run the uh, clean carb and run the carb off a tank, you know, off a little uh, bottle, and uh, we go to fire it, and nothing. Golly. So then I said, let me pull the spark plugs out, double check all those again. We've already done it once. Did all that, put it in, and I tried to turn it over. And it just click, click. I'm like, man, the motor's locked up or something. So I was just sitting there, and one of like my buddies was with me, and uh, I said, this, this stinks. I bought this car thinking it was going to be a good one running. And I said, well, what's this? Quit messing with us, unplug everything. And when I barely moved the key, the thing lit up and fired off the first try. It was in the ignition switch was bad. And so you just barely moved the right way, and that car fired up every time. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. So I get the car in. We didn't clean it or anything. And, you know, fire it off, put it on jack stands, put it in gear car goes through the gears. So I sent and I'm sitting there going thinking this is a manual four-speed car but I'm noticing what's well, on the jack stands I want to get in three gears. I'm like well, we're missing a gear or something. So I ordered an Marty report and waiting on it to get in. In the meantime shifting gears notice we're missing a gear. Marty report comes in I look and I'm like I told my buddy Jeff this thing's a three-speed. I never even seen a three-speed. I had posted pictures and stuff before some forums and stuff and we were talking about it and they were like there's no such thing as three speed I'm like Marty report three speed car shaker hood louvers the right color 
matching numbers car, everything's there. And I just told my buddy right then, I says, that just shows you. A lot of people go and ask about a car and they said they'll never sell it, but for assistance, I kept going back to the guy, kept talking to the guy, went and made friends with him, took him to lunch one day, just became friends with the guy, and the guy just opened up. He's like, yeah, I'll sell it. I got some other cars. I got a 65 Fastback. You interested in that? I'm like, yeah. So it just shows you right then, never give up, you know, try to work your way. Don't be, don't be pushy. Don't be any of that. Just go in there, carry a conversation on. You'll be surprised what doors open. So after I got the car in, got it running, had it on jack stands, went through the gears, and I said, you know what? It's a perfect car as a driver, as a, you know, a perfect barn find, someone can put in their garage, or someone can restore it and put it back together. So I put the car online and started getting action on that car from all over the world. I was getting calls from Germany, the UK, um, all over the south, California all over, a lot of people from up north, solid car. And started getting some phone calls and um, got a knock on the door one day and said, hey, I heard you have a Mach 1. I'm like, uh, yeah. He said, mind if I look at it? So I showed the guy the car and he looked at it. He ended up selling the car to a local guy that looked online and seen the car. Him and his son came up, purchased the car, and he had sent me a picture of the car the next day. Him and his son took time to detail that car and buff it and everything. And that car looked brand new. I, I put on my Snapchat a, um, a picture of it when it was covered in dust with a picture of it underneath of it shining. And the guy says, yeah, we're just trying to figure out if we're gonna restore it or just drive it like it is. So with all the hard work, you know, it makes you feel good because, you know, a lot of hard work, months and months went into that car of trying just to buy the car. You know, that'll mentally wear you down. But the good part was getting it in, getting it running, getting the Marty report, checking everything out. It was a good purchase. And then going to the owner. And the gentleman that bought it, he wanted that car. The only reason why is he had every Mach 1 except the 1970. And he wanted to restore it with his son the way it was. And it just, it's, it, it's good that it goes to a good owner, and especially someone that's going to appreciate it for what the car is.